Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another Stephen King review where I'm going back and reviewing all of the books, all of his books I haven't reviewed on the channel and there's quite a lot of them. When I went back and looked, I'd only reviewed, I think it was eight, uh, actually reviewing them. I've done Thursday Theorists on all of his stuff, most of his stuff. I haven't covered the Dark Tower books yet, but uh, uh, if you don't know, Thursday Theorist is my series where I connect all of his stuff to um, to each other, whether it be King Universe, The Dark Tower, all of them I connect to The Dark Tower. That's pretty much the, the theme of that show. But anyways, that's not this. This is a review for Cujo. Um, Cujo is... Uh, Cujo is one of those books that I, I, don't, I don't get into arguments about it, but it's, it's one of those books where I, I just don't ever want to read it again. I've read it three or four times. Um, forced myself to go back through it um, sometimes just to check uh, for the Thursday Theorist videos. That's why I brought them up. That's why I brought them up earlier. Um, and another reason is to see if my mentality has changed regarding this book. It's not that I don't like the book. I think the book is too good in certain aspects. Um, but I don't like reading about animals in this situation, um, whether it be sick animals. Uh, animal cruelty, uh, animal attacks, any of that kind of thing. Also, I have a little bit of uh, personal bias here because I was attacked by a dog when I was nine years old. Uh, there was a dog that everybody picked on through rocks at. Uh, we were walking, we'd walk back and forth to school and people would always pick on this dog um, on the street that he normally lived on. Um, he, so he was a very vicious dog, but the, the kids in the neighborhood had cre created this monster, a, you know, if you want to call them that. So, uh, the, those people went out of town. They had the person that lived across the street from me, babysitting, not babysitting, dog sitting. And I went over there to see my friend at the time. My friend Aaron lived across the street from me. And I went over there and his mom, not thinking, you know, I, well, not thinking at all, obviously, told me uh, he was around back. She didn't warn me about the dog. Um, so I go around the side, I go through the side gate, go into the backyard and, I walk past this uh, cinder block wall and I'm calling his name, my friend's name, and all of a sudden I hear this growling. I turn around and there's this huge white husky uh, wolf mixture, I don't know, it's probably more husky than anything else, probably full-blooded husky, I don't know. Solid white with a uh, heterochromia, so one eye was blue, one eye was uh, like a hazel. Uh, and he came right at me, grabbed a hold of my leg. He only got one tooth in me, and then he jerked his head and tore my leg. I actually wrote about all this in uh, my, my novel, Bay's End. Um, tore a chunk out of my leg about that. Well, not out of my leg, but ripped my leg open. Um, I think in the book I described it as, you know, just like it had been opened with a zipper. Um, and I had numerous stitches inside and out. Ended up getting an infection in it. Found out that I was allergic to penicillin. Big point. Uh, big 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 time of my life for, for issues and problems. Anyways, uh, I eventually got better and, uh, you know, but ever since then I've been terrified of, of big dogs, especially if they're strangers, you know, especially if I don't know them. I have a big lab pit bull mix. His name's Ash, but he doesn't scare me at all. It's strange dogs that I don't know. So reading this one does trigger me. Um, it does, you know, bring me back to that moment of being attacked because the book is about a mother and a son who get trapped in a car um, on this property where this rabid dog is, you know, the terrorizing people. Um, also, it's, I think it's the first, I, I don't, I'm not saying it's the first like serial killer thing that, uh, that King had, had done, but it was a very genre story. You know, you had this, this dog, monstrous dog, uh, has rabies, uh, and is slowly picking people off. And then you have the isolation aspect once uh, Tad and his mother get stuck in the car. Um, I also per greatly pref prefer the movie to the book. And this is funny because you guys know that I love, I, I, I love unhappy endings. Well, the book ends in a much different way than the movie does, but the movie, I prefer the movie because 
that it has a, I think it has a better ending. But that's just me being biased because I am a parent. I don't want to go too much into it. But the, uh, the, the book ends drastically differently. Um, so if this is another one, if you have seen the movie that you haven't read the book, I definitely suggest you go and read the book also because the ending hits a lot harder than the ending of the movie. But I actually prefer the movie. That's just the one, you know. And I, I don't watch the movie much either for the same reasons. You know, it's triggering for me. I don't, I don't want to relive that, you know, part of my of my life but there's also a lot of debate to be had of whether or not the monster in tad's closet is pennywise there's a lot of stuff that is mentioned um it could be the the ghost of frank dodd the uh the killer from uh what is it uh the, the dead zone i don't know why i wanted to say deadliest catch anyways but um there's mention of him um in fact in this one this one's probably the best Castle Rock book in that all the rest of them are hyper focused on Easter eggs, um, especially especially the Chismar, uh, Gwendy's uh, magic feather. It was absolutely ridiculous fan fiction. Just going around, literally taking a tour of Castle Rock, going, "You remember this? Hey, you remember this? Hey, I know you remember this. You remember that?" Because Dodd's mentioned, Cujo's mentioned, you know, Leland Gaunt's Needful Things is mentioned. All different kinds of stuff are mentioned. But uh, anyways, back to Cujo. Cujo is a great book, um, but I never get it, give it over three stars because I never want to read it again. Um, of course, I do. I go back and I read it. I've read, like I said, I've read it four times, um, and I think I also listened to the audiobook. So I've been through it at least five times because um, I've done all of his audiobooks um, also. Um, I've read all of his books, uh, and then I go back and I, I check with the audiobook. Uh, just to give people, you know, when I do my reviews, for this one I can't remember if the audiobook is any good or not, um, but I do remember being able to listen to it all the way through, um, which, is a, which is a plus with actual productions and with Stephen King. You, you usually get a decent production with Stephen King because they put so much money behind it. <clears throat> but the question that I would like to ask you guys uh, this time is, do you find this book hard to read due to the graphic nature of the... Uh, basically, that the, that the main villain here is a dog. Um, does that ever bother you? That's the question that I want to ask. Does it bother you that in this one... Or or does, does it make the book even more poignant knowing that Cujo had no control over himself? I don't know. Let me know your uh, thoughts down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E. You have been you. This has been another Stephen King book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!